Last year, over 750 tons of cocaine were smuggled out of the Amazon basin and sold to an insatiable world market for an estimated $85 billion. Peru now produces one third of the world's cocaine. For thousands of years, the coca leaf has grown here naturally in the foothills of the Andes. And it's to this remote corner of Peru that I'm heading first. We're just about to enter the Varai Valley, which according to the United Nations, has more coca plants in it per hectare than anywhere else on the planet. But despite the vast profits made from cocaine, this is still one of the poorest regions in the whole of Peru. Unemployment runs at over 50%, one in three people are illiterate, and over half the population suffers from chronic malnutrition. Peru has already lost 9.5 million acres of its rainforest to deforestation. And while no one knows the exact figure, Peru's ecological forum has stated that this country loses 1,000 acres of rainforest to cocaine production every day. Hey! Oh. It's the rainy season and the roads are not good. Landslides and floods make every journey an experience. We're uh, in a village called Machente. Uh, uh, we've been held up on numerous occasions on the uh, seven-hour journey so far. The problem with that is we don't really want to be travelling uh, after it gets dark because uh, there are bandits on the road. There are also narco-traffickers that hijack vehicles. It's estimated that Peru produces around 300 tonnes of cocaine every year, and all of it has to be carried through or smuggled around security checks like the one ahead. Captain Gustavo Santa Cruz commands the police checkpoint into the Vrai Valley. Ellos cada día más ingenian y cada modalidad cada día sale un ingenio, o sea, de cómo sacar droga. Lo pueden sacar en madera, lo sacan en, en extintores, no, y en diferentes cosas que a veces nosotros tampoco no nos imaginamos. This is virtually our first day in country and very much aware already that the, uh, the police aren't very popular with the locals here because even if they're not transporting drugs, which obviously the majority of them aren't, they still have to go through this intensive searching and you can tell it's not doing much for community relations. Nestled on the river, San Francisco is one of the larger towns in the Vrai Valley. Coca growing has been part of the culture here since before the time of the Incas, and it's still legal to grow a small amount for chewing and for tea. So you got bananas, papaya, more bananas, limes, and that's coca. Champ, champ mango, cuando? Five. It's not bad, is it? But as you can see, everything's for sale here, including, including the, the coca. Um, leaf, which, you know, basically is considered by these guys here as part and parcel of the way that they go about living their lives. It's something they take, like, we take coffee or, or a cup of tea. The Peruvian government estimates that 99% of the 130,000 tonnes of cocoa leaf grown here goes directly into the illegal narcotics trade. We're attempting to make contact with one of the coca growers in the valley. And we've been told uh, very clearly that we've got to keep a low profile. People, understandably, uh, are very untrusting of gringos, of uh, Europeans that come here, because they're generally here to, uh, to stop them growing uh, the crop that makes the most money in the region.
Louis de Baal is a journalist with experience in this area and has arranged a riverside rendezvous with a local coca farmer. The farmer is taking considerable risk just being seen with us. Not only the risk of an eight-year prison sentence if caught by the authorities, but also something far worse if caught by the local drug cartel. Anyway, our guy's not happy about us being in this particular bit. I don't think this land belongs to him, so he wants us out of it as quickly as possible. And this is it. This is coca. This is the actual leaf. Yeah, look at this. There's fields of it. And obviously, this was forest at one point. The land's been burnt. You can see where some of the trees were. And obviously, they've planted the bushes. And when you look around on the valleys, you can see where the forest's been taken out and coca has been planted. We're uh, quite high up now, aren't we? And we're still on your land, yeah? This is still your land. Mm. And you're chewing it now, yeah? Mm. This, uh, así, nosotros trabajamos, pe, con esto. Ánimo para trabajar. I've got to try coca now, right? OK. Sin esto no vale, pe. Can you swallow it or you just chew it? Just chew it. Don't swallow it. Mm. It's like tea. Mm. It's like tea, Eve. Demand for coca has gone up dramatically. Sí. Estaba más peor y de ahí se ha aumentado. Está recuperado el precio. Estaba tres soles, cuatro soles nomás. Hasta cinco soles se aumenta de ahí, diez soles, veinte soles, treinta soles. Aumentó, aumentó, cuarenta, cinco, sesenta. Hasta ahorita está ochenta y cinco soles. The price has gone steadily up and up and up and up. And that's why it's worth taking the risk of prosecution, because of the profit to be made. Even with four harvests a year, it's obvious from where he lives that this farmer is far from being wealthy. He's lived here all his life, and growing coca helps support a wife and three children. Next, we're guided deeper into the forest to meet the people who process large quantities of coca leaf to produce what's known as paste, the next stage in the production of cocaine. Well, the first thing you notice, you can smell chemicals in it. The dry coca leaves have been left soaking in a tank with water and bleach for 10 hours and are now being trampled. What comes out from the leaves yes. is on that bath, yes. and it's mixed with kerosene. See? And the kerosene will help to separate yep. the drug yes. from the rest. Right. So once yeah. they've done all the process with the kerosene, they will add uh, this ammonium. Ammonia. Yeah, you see the color? It's a color blank. It's gone white. God, you can smell the ammonia coming off it. That's only half the bucket. It's a bit like making cheese, I think, you know. They're absolutely, they're, they've now put it in like a Hessian type material and they're, they're squeezing all the kerosene out and the ammonia off it. And what's left is the cocaine paste. We'll go from here now somewhere else, um, somewhere we're not allowed to go to, uh, to a proper laboratory. More chemicals will be added to it and it will be heated up. And eventually from that, you'll get block cocaine, which is pure cocaine. A series of plastic lined trenches and buckets of chemicals wasn't exactly my idea of a laboratory. And I was shocked to see young children involved in the process. However, what happened at the end of every production line reminds me of exactly why I'm here. I stand and watch as litres of acid, kerosene and bleach are poured straight into the river. Ah! As part of our investigation into the destruction of the rainforest, I'm in the Vrai Valley of Peru with a special army unit whose anti-narcotic role has a political twist. 